it's me, Bussy, and welcome back to Hot or Rat. Today we're going to be reviewing episode 4 of Drag Race Down Under. And for the main challenge and runway this episode, our queens had to recycle trash into fashionable runway ready garments. We also saw Art Simone get recycled into the competition. But why? I'll be discussing Art's returns, going over everyone's looks, and also analyzing a new little subplot that the producers are trying to sell us at the end of the video. Now, let's get started. First up, Let's talk about Art Baby. Honestly, I was shocked to see her come out of the dumpster and to not also be accompanied by the other two queens that have been eliminated in this competition so far. Don't get me wrong at all. I'm thrilled to have Art back in the competition. I think she deserves this spot, but it just felt like a big missed opportunity on the show's production side not to give everyone else a fair chance. I think the get out of jail free card that they essentially handed Art is honestly just a blatant sign of overproduction this season, especially because we found out that it was Art who left the little like watch out note on the mirror. Like that just made this whole thing feel so obviously planned from the get go. The shocking elimination of the queen that everybody expects to do well in the competition happens to leave a note that says watch out and then is brought back two episodes later. I'm just like, girl, are we even trying to hide the writing and storyline production anymore at this point? Or <laughs> we're just blatantly acknowledging that nothing about this is even a competition, it's just reality TV. Okay, and I don't know what all the queens really thought, but Coco tweeted this. Give the white girl another go. She deserves it. Hashtag drag race down under. Let me know what y'all thought about this choice to bring art back down in the comments below. And while you do that, I'll talk a little bit about her outfit. My first thought when she hit the runway was, Marie Antoinette on drag race, groundbreaking. <laughs> okay, just kidding. But like, we have seen this done a million times before. Raja, Max, Detox, Jinx, Robbie Turner, Miss Cracker, Jimbo, to name a few. Hell, we've already even seen a Marie Antoinette interpretation on this season of Drag Race from JoJo in episode one. I will say, this look was very pretty. In particular, I loved the sparkly hair, the giant headpiece. It was very camp, very drag, and very art. It was pretty. If I could improve just one small thing about it, I maybe would have added some glitter or rhinestones to the tights just to match the glittery sparkly explosion that she had going on from like the chest up. But like, you can't say this isn't one of the best constructed looks on the runway tonight. This look is a Marie Antoine hat. And yes, that pun was recycled. Next up, are you kidda me? <laughs> Bitch, are you kidding me? This look is, to be gentle about it, revolting. <laughs> It is absolutely abhorrent through the lens of fashion. It is terrible, but I kind of hate it so much that it makes me take a second look at it and I realize, okay, it is really well constructed. There's a cohesive theme. She's got a great silhouette going on, like teeny tiny little waist. And she even has like a little tool petticoat underneath the skirt that she's constructed. Again, very well done. It just isn't gonna be everyone's, you know, preferred cup of tea. I think because it is so traditionally camp and very far removed from the fashion world. And I think it's so funny to see people's different takes and uses of unconventional materials. Utica's use of a sleeping bag, for example, on her design challenge and actually ball pit balls that she had on some of her runways versus like what Ketamine chooses to do with those same things. Anyways, this look is 100% pure, camp, tacky, unadulterated stupidity. And I think it's hot. Next up, they may have flown too close to the sun tonight. It's etc. etc. They were going for this sort of 20s sun goddess reference, which I think was partially achieved, definitely in their own flavor, I would say. Also, this is one of the looks I think on the runway that makes you forget that they did indeed construct their looks out of trash, especially with the really pretty details that they have included on this look with those little like crystals hanging off at different points. But I can also see what the judges were saying. It maybe didn't pack as much of a punch as some of the other looks on the runway, but by no stretch of the imagination was this look bad at all. Etc. may have ended up at more of like cloud goddess, but I still like it and think this look is hot. <laughs> Next up, is it fashion? It's Maxi Shield. So fresh off the back of Drag Race UK season two, where Vivian Westwood was a common topic of discussion with queens like Ahura, I immediately recognized this reference. Like for her to, as the judges said, really hit that reference spot on, that you know immediately what she's doing when she hits the runway, but also in her own unique original flavor, I think was a huge success tonight. She even made a purse out of the same material. I love the little spray paint details on the back. Maxi 
killed it. Fashionably speaking, I think Maxi's may be the best on the runway tonight. If I could change just one small thing, I may have added a small little fascinator out of that same material just right atop her head, which also would have been very in line with classic Vivian Westwood references. Tonight, Maxi proves she's no Maxinista. She's a fully fledged fashion queen. I think this look is hot. Next up. I'd like to speak to the manager, please. <laughs> we need a refund. Karen, what is this? My biggest issue with this look overall is that so little of it was actually transformed from the trash that it started as. The lay, the neck pillow, the wakeboard, just sitting in a backpack on her back. All in an, I guess, excuse to try to pass this off as some sort of character-inspired runway of Chappelle Corby. Like, I'm convinced that that was really just some sort of elaborate distraction she was trying to spin for Rue to basically pass off that she didn't have the same sewing and outfit construction abilities that maybe some of the other queens had. So many of our other queens tonight that we've seen are telling stories, they have full references, and this is a pillowcase tucked into a towel wrapped around her waist. Karen was carrying a joint on the runway, but this look deserves time in the joint. It's a rot. Next up, Electra. Shocked? Yes, I was. In my notes while I was watching the episode, I just wrote, wow. Electra turned the corner. I thought it was scarlet. That was how good the makeup, hair, and overall look got overnight. And once I realized it was Electra, I was like, Hold up, wait a minute. Did she just pull Shark Us? Because how does somebody pull a 180 that dramatic? from one episode to the next. Anyways, couldn't have been more proud of Electra tonight. She did what I think is most important in a design challenge, taking those original materials and transforming them to a point where you don't even really recognize what the original material once was. In her case, it was ties that a man would wear in a business suit, which funnily, the whole concept of her outfit would have been great for like Karen from Finance's character, <laughs> but here it is on Electra. Anyways, I loved it. Electra, shock me and tie me up. This look was hot. Next up, you won't want to put her down. It's Anita Wiglet. On my first watch through, I was genuinely surprised with how well Anita pulled through on this challenge. I didn't expect a fully told like book burning story, which is super important in our era of like Big Brother and fears of censorship, et cetera, et cetera. But the judges didn't see what I saw. They were basically saying like, oh, this is an original. We've seen this before. And I'm like, what the hell are they even talking about? The book ball in season eight, where they asked them to make looks out of books or maybe Ivy Winter's paper dress. But then again, like none of those looks looked anything like this. And so on top of them being off base about the look being unoriginal, it's also not fair to give that critique to her when they didn't give that same critique to Art, which would have been actually more valid to give to her. A small valid critique I will say that the judges gave Anita maybe was that the bottom part of the dress did kind of just turn into book pages fully just glued on, but I wasn't mad about it because as they came up the dress, they got more burned and more burned. Anyway, I don't know what those judges are smoking, but I think I need a refund on my WoW Presents Plus subscription, mama. This look is hot, literally. Next up, speaking of recycled looks, it's Scarlett Adams. This look is really clean. It's very pretty, but I feel like we just saw this on Utica and Miss Cracker. And I'm not bringing up those comparisons to be shady towards Scarlett, only to bring them up as a point of discussion around this concept of like originality on the runway. Girl, we're what, 13 seasons and like four, five, six international seasons deep, we're gonna have some reused references. So I think this is really just a great way to point out that the judges will sometimes just say totally random things that make no sense to drive storylines and plots that serve no other point than to tell a predetermined story of what will happen on a season of Drag Race. But yeah, the flower fascinator, the little grapes all over the look, the little lace details on the hems of the outfit, all very pretty, dainty, really great look, Scarlett. This look is a total snack. It's hot. That's it for the runway looks, but that's not all the fish that we have to fry tonight in terms of 
In addition to Art's return, we are also seeing this storyline between Scarlet and Elektra develop even further. Last episode, we saw these two lead the two teams. Of course, Scarlet won and Elektra ended up in the bottom. And in this episode, we see Rue come into the workroom and push Scarlet to give advice to Elektra in front of like all of the queens in the workroom. Cue drama. And look, if I know anything about this show, it's that everything happens for a reason. I have no doubt that we are going to see these two in a lip sync smackdown in the coming few episodes, maybe before like we hit final three or four. But that's just my prediction. Let me know what you are thinking. In our bottom two this week is Karen from Finance and Anita Wiglet. This was tough for me. Karen absolutely deserved the bottom. I think they could have just sent her home for what she put on the runway alone. But you know, you gotta have someone else in the bottom. Should it have been Anita? Should it have been etc.? Should it have been Ketamine? I don't know, maybe one of those three. I think it really was just crazy to see the obvious lack of effort on Karen's side versus the large amount of effort that I think every other queen put into this design challenge because there were so many great looks on the runway tonight. And I did do a reaction to this lip sync, which is available exclusively on my Patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. That's my members only website where my patrons get exclusive benefits like early access to my videos, access to the Bussy Queen Discord server, exclusive videos, access to vote in hottest top polls, and more. Click the link in the description of my video to join my patron family today. We do see Anita Wiglet sashay away, which didn't feel too right, and then they give the win to Scarlet, which, while justifiable, I think didn't sit right with me either. I really wanted to see them reward Maxi or Electra for, like, really going out on a limb and amping up what they've been doing in the competition. I just don't see the point in, like, solidifying somebody win status so early in the competition. Again, this maybe was just another little point to further develop that Scarlet and Electra storyline. I guess only time will tell. My hottest hat on the runway tonight goes to... Electra Shock. I also asked my patrons to vote for their hottest hot and tonight they've chosen Maxi Shield. I want to say thanks so much for watching today's video and give a special shout out to Alexander Aaron, Alexander Deloy, Antonio, Leo, Kami Burke, Chris Walker, Dimitri Midnight, Chris, Merritt Kirkpatrick, Bart Reening, and Tracy, who've all just joined my Patreon at the hot tier. And Aiden, Ali Al, Anthony, Bradley, Cameron, Cherry Poppins, Christopher, Claire Moosdale, Clark, Deutsche Leather, Fabio, Fractalize, Freddy, JJ Bearclaw, Goaty P, Got the Morbs, Jay, Jenny, Gen X, Jonah, Johnny, Kiki, and John, Madam Muffy, Maddie Morissette, Nathan, Olympus Mons Venus, Opal, Queen Sassy Canister, Ron, Shannon, Shazzy, Sky, Sunshine, Tina, Thomas, Timotheus, Timothy, Tony, Unique, Vendetta, and Really, who were all sporting me at my hottest hot tier. And Angel, Caroline, Cyrus, Hope, JB, Joseph, JP and Dallas, Laura, Nurse Luca, Matthew, Mike, Rochambeau, Robert, Scooby Snacks, Sailor. Steven, Tom, and Triton, who were all sporting at my Bussy Queen Collector tier. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Love ya. Bye.